All right, so if you pause the video, you guys should have tried to jot down, or I want you to try to jot down for based on what we had for the first one, you guys jot down this one. So pause the video and uh, take a shot at it. <clears throat> All right, so if we come back, if you guys should have tried to based on what you saw, is it really going to change where those positions are of everything that we labeled? No. This still, this part right here, okay, this part right here of your graph, okay, is still your activation energy. So I'm just trying to get that. All right, there we go. So this is still your activation energy, EA and activation energy. Okay, because it goes from the reactants up until the top of the hill. And what's the point at the top of the hill? That's going to be your activated complex. Okay, the activated complex. The intermediates are right in here in this part. Okay, and then over here, now it can change some, and that's okay, but this will be your delta H. Okay, your heated reaction, your enthalpy. The difference in energy between the products and reactants. Now, if we take a look at this one, all right, our delta H is going to be 45 final minus initial, 45 kilojoules minus 10 kilojoules. All right, when we take a look at that, delta H here is going to be a positive 35 kilojoules. And that should make sense for endothermic because endothermic, we're adding energy. We're putting it into the system, okay? Again, if you have questions, it is pretty straightforward like this, but if there's some pieces you're missing, all right, we can talk about it when I get back tomorrow. All right, take a look. In your notes, all right, in your packet, this is what I want you guys to work on. You're going to answer the questions about the diagram up above. One thing I want to say that may help you out is to draw your lines across to make it a little bit easier to see all the pieces. So this is what I do typically if they're not already there. I like to draw my three lines, kind of showing where my products are, my reactants are, and my top of the hill, that activated complex. So take a few minutes, pause the video, um, go through in your groups, answer those questions right there, and then we can um, come back and go over it with you guys. All right, so you should have taken a few minutes to go through. I want you to do your best. Now we're going to go through it, get a different color, and then... Um, We'll talk through this, and you guys will do some more practice in a little bit. Is the above reaction endo or exothermic? Well, let's take a look. Our reactants are up here. Now, there's no numbers associated with here, but you can still get the gist of it. We start up, and we end lower. So what are we doing? We're losing energy. That's going to be an exothermic reaction. What letter represents the potential energy? Now, this is something we did not talk about before, but what does potential energy mean? It's got to be below. It's the ability to undergo it. So potential energy, guys, is over here. We're talking about of the reactants. All right. So know where your reactants are. Reactants we know are right here at the beginning. So where, what shows the potential energy of my reactants? That's going to be from this line where my reactants are all the way to the bottom of my graph. That's going to be letter B. Okay. Because again, if I know that my reactants are on this line right here where I filled it in. The potential energy is shown from that line all the way down to the bottom to really see all the amount of potential energy that we have. What letter represents the potential energy of the product? So likewise, you should know where your products are. They're at the very end. So notice we have A plus B. Those are my reactants. C plus D in this very general potential energy diagram. Those are my products. So what letter is going to represent that? Well, it's this one that's going from products all the way down. So it's going to be letter F. <coughs> Excuse me. What letter represents the heat of reaction? Heat of reaction, delta H. Again, that's between your products and reactants. Now, the letters and the arrows, guys, may be mixed around. They may not be in the same position every single time. What one shows between products and reactants? Well, if we highlight it right here, there it is. That's This is why drawing those lines and those orange lines that I drew in the beginning can help you out a lot, especially if they don't have them there for you. So that's going to be letter D. What letter represents the activation energy of the forward reaction? Well, if we go back here, guys, and we take a look, activation energy was right here. It's where the reactants go up to the activated complex. Now, that's of the forward reaction. So that means we're going from left to right. That's the forward reaction. So what letter would that be? It's going to be right there. That should be letter A. What letter represents the activation energy of the reverse reaction? So I'm going to change up colors again. 
But we're going to go backwards. The reverse is going from right to left. Remember, these are reversible reactions. Activation energy still holds true. It's from where your reactants are. Now, our, our um, what's it called? Our reference point has changed here. We're now over here on the right-hand side instead of over here on the left. So our reactants in the reverse would be C plus D yields A plus B. So there's our activation energy. All right, E. What letter represents the potential energy of the activated complex? So again, knowing where that activated complex is, and that's here at the top of the hill, what letter is that? It has to be letter C. Potential energy, again, this is our graph of potential energy, so it's anything below the line is what we're looking for. Is the reverse reaction, so again, answer the question that's asked. Is the reverse reaction endo or exothermic? Well, look up here in question number one. This is talking about the forward reaction. The forward is exo, so that means the reaction, the reverse is going to have to be the opposite. Even if you don't make that connection, look at it. Go from right to left. Follow the green arrow that I drew up here at the top. Right to left. We start low and we end up higher. That's an endothermic reaction. Now, this is something we did not talk about just a few minutes ago. Okay, and that's catalyst. If catalysts were added, what letter would change? So we're going to go back to our notes here, all right? And I'm going to change up my color another time. Let's do black and let's make it a little bit thicker. Okay, so what a catalyst does? You guys told me yesterday it speeds up a chemical reaction. Why? What a catalyst does is it's going to go right along this line here, like we saw already but it's going to draw a new hill. Okay, A catalyst. What makes something a catalyst? Why it speeds up a reaction is that it lowers the activation energy needed for your reaction. So now we're right here. This is our new EA. It lowers that activated complex, the kind of the, the tip of where the energy is highest, the most energy that's needed. So it lowers that overall activation energy and activated complex down to where it's a little bit easier. It takes less energy. It can go faster. You don't have to put in as much to get there. Same thing down here on our endothermic graph. Okay, follow the line, but it's going to go something like this. All right, to where now our activation energy is here of the catalyzed reaction. Okay, something very big to understand all right, is that that's what a catalyst does. <clears throat> it lowers the activation energy, so it does not take as much energy to put into the system, so therefore it will go and react faster. All right, so back here, what letter or letters would it change? Well, it's going to change A, that activation energy that we just talked about. What else might it change? Okay, so if I were to draw the line in here like this, Oops, went too far. Okay, what other lines are going to change? It's also going to change this arrow right here. This arrow is going to be lower as well, like we said, just A. And then E is also going to be lower. So A, C, and E. Now, if you're confused with that, again, when I get back tomorrow, we can talk more about that. Okay? Don't overcomplicate these. You've got to know the terms. If you don't know what these terms mean in all these questions right here at the bottom, you're obviously not going to know where um, anything in the diagram is going to be. So you've got to know your vocab. All right. This page, I want you guys now to go through, practice this on your own. Take a few minutes, pause the video, and we'll come back and do it in a few minutes. All right. You all should have tried this again in your groups. Hopefully this one goes a little bit easier than the last one. Here we go. Activation energy of the forward catalyzed reaction. You've got to read the question carefully. All right. Activation energy, that's going to be letter F. Letter F right in here. All right. Relative energy of the reactants for the forward reaction. So relative energy, guys, what do you think that's asking? Based on what you know, relative energy of the reactants. <clears throat> that's going to be another term for your potential energy. Okay, potential energy. Mean the same thing. So that's going to be letter E. Relative energy of the products of the forward. All right, that's going to be, um, it's actually not even written in there. I just realized that. All right, <clears throat> it's going to be represented by letter C. All right, C. Actually, I was wrong with E. Sorry. 
It's not E. All right, A. In this case, it's going to be A because, again, look at C. There's no arrow below it, so it's going to be just resting on the line because then you could just go right over here and measure your two relative or potential energies. So A is going to be number two, and C will be number three. The difference in energy between the reactants and the products. Let me erase what I've got here so you can see it. That's going to be letter E because it goes between where this line is of your reactants and your products. E is going to be your difference. Again, what's that called though? That's going to be called your delta H, that difference in energy. All right, and that's letter E. Activation energy of the forward uncatalyzed reaction. It's going to be up top. That's letter D. Activation energy of the reverse uncatalyzed, that's going to be letter G, going backwards, right to left. And the relative energy of the activated complex, that's going to be letter B, up at that top peak. So now, we're going to use these graphs here, all right, A, B, C, or D, to answer these questions here at the bottom, A through 14. All right, which, one, which graph shows the lowest initial energy state for the reactants? Now, you have actual numbers here. So if we go over here, what's this? This is going to be 50. All right, this one's going to be at 300. This one right here is going to be 150. This one right here is going to be 100. Which one's got the lowest? Obviously, letter A. So which one shows the greatest activation energy? So that, again, if we know reactivation energy, it's going to be this part right here on all of them. Okay, so we take a look, draw those arrows if it helps you. Oops, sorry, I've kind of gone a little bit too crazy there. It's going to be to get up to the top of the hill. Okay, if we take a look, A is going from just under 400 down to 50, so that's, you know, 300-ish, 325. Letter B is about 100. Uh, letter C is about 150. And letter D is also about mm, between 150 and 200. So letter A is going to have the greatest activation energy, again, for the forward reaction. Which graph shows the reaction with the greatest change in the heat content? What's that asking for? Delta H. All right, so look at your products minus reactants. Now this is greatest change. It doesn't mean positive or negative. It's just looking for the overall greatest change. So this one, we're going to be about... 250 minus 50, so this is going to be about 200, is going to be your delta H for letter A. Your delta H for letter B is going to be 300 down to just about zero, so it's going to be roughly 300 there. Um, letter C, your delta H, if we take a look, if I zoom in, all right, it's going to be right here at 200 to 150, so that's going to be 50 kilojoules, and over here, all right, we're just under 300 and 100, so it's going to be roughly 200 kilojoules. All right, so which one is going to be the greatest? Obviously, it's going to be letter B. Which graph shows forward reaction, which heat is absorbed? Now, it can be more than one. How many are there? There's going to be two. Heat absorbed, all right, is going to be letters A. And C, what type of reaction is absorbed? Endothermic. All right. Which shows the forward reaction which heat is released. What's that asking for? It's asking for exothermic. So that's going to be letters B and D. All right, B and D. Which one would benefit most from the addition of a catalyst? What does the catalyst do? It lowers the activation energy. Therefore, which one has the highest activation energy? That's going to be letter A. Which one shows the greatest activation energy for the reverse reaction? That's pretty easy to see. That's going to be this guy right here, letter B. Now, I know I went through and explained that very quickly. Like I said, if you have more questions, all right, <clears throat> you can ask tomorrow. We can kind of sure it up. I think after you see a few practice problems, though, it's probably becoming very easy for you. What you guys are going to work on now is there is an extra worksheet. It's got on one side heating curve practice it's review from back in unit 10 so you want to go back and look at your old notes and then on the back of that there's some more potential energy diagram stuff that you guys are going to practice with you also have um, checkpoint number four four due tomorrow that's on the board um, and you have a quiz on thursday 
All right, so you've got plenty to work on um, with the rest of class. All right, and I will see you guys tomorrow.